Good evening, Hyperspinners. Today we're going to be talking about how to remap your controls in RetroArch, so get ready. Alright guys, it's been a while since uh, the last video, but here we are again, and we are going to be talking about RetroArch. So, what's really good about RetroArch here is all of your games can really fit all under one roof and the problem here was is the conversion of basically the the original emulators into RetroArch uh, there is a problem when it comes to let's say light gun games um, what I've got here is I'm launching everything through hyperspin and essentially what we can do is we can assign the light gun games to a different controller type in RetroArch. So, you know, if we're looking at uh, light gun games, or if we're looking at racing games, if you've got specific uh, controllers that are unique to the game itself, and you need that controller to work a little differently, I was having trouble when I was doing this conversion over to RetroArch. But fear not, I have found a way to <laughs> you know get this thing working so let me kind of demonstrate what I'm even talking about I guess but uh, I don't know let's let's pull something up so what I was finding is is if I wanted a light gun game I would only have to you know use a controller because the controller was set up for you know retroarch in the core and what we can do is we can not only map the core itself which is the system but we can also map the controller as a whole and I'll show you how to do essentially both just so you can uh, be aware but I thought it was clever and there wasn't a lot of documentation to actually do this so it took a while for me to figure out but it's a uh, pretty easy and pretty cool um, it works great and I'll share the secret here in a minute so I'm gonna hit tab here and it's essentially going to um, get to the the menu here here we go so I'm gonna hit the backspace here to to look at the quick menu I'm gonna scroll over what we really care about here is uh, the input so when I press that you're gonna see when I go down to user one bind, you're gonna see that it's defaulted to controller. So that, that basically on a control panel, uh, you know, I've already mapped the keys themselves by you know going down here and selecting everything that uh, you want on your buttons. Uh, but the problem was is you know let's say if you were looking at you know a light gun game, a racing game, and you have a wheel. Uh, the light gun game requires a different controller type so I'm gonna go ahead and backspace here so right now what you see here is what's assigned to the core so if you were to launch any system this is the type of controller that uh, the system would be expecting so controller is you know an actual hard you know controller or the controller panel itself and the buttons that have been assigned so for the light gun game so I'm gonna hit backspace a couple times what I found is if you go to quick menu and then you go down so first you've got to launch a game and when you get into this you go down to controls and here we are this is where it all happens so you see user 1 uh, control and user 2 controller now if this were a light gun game which I'll show in a minute uh, you would just select you know whatever it was so there's light gun uh, some cores uh, really only work under mouse but for Dreamcast uh, light gun works fantastic but I'm gonna go ahead and move this back to controller so we don't screw anything up but after you've made that selection like literally it's just this toggle uh, on device type 1 and 2 what I also found was 
with the light guns themselves, uh, what you'll find is the controllers. You can kind of see, you know, the, uh, all you've got the selection for is this uh, actual uh, button. So if you were looking at the hard coded controller, right, uh, you would see A, B, X, Y on the Dreamcast. But there was no way to actually make the A button be, let's say, I don't know, S on the keyboard. So that was one thing that I was also hanging up on, and I found a way around that as well. I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. But once you make all of your selections for that controller type, uh, by default, it, it should all display like this. So the problem that I was describing where you want a button to be a different keystroke, uh, you'll have to edit this uh, config file, which I'll show you here in a minute. So once you've, you know, breezed through, you know, these controllers, uh, buttons, all you've got to do, and what's really important, is save this as a game remap file. So basically, next time you launch this game, it's going to look at this remap file and it's going to say these are the controls for this specific game. Uh, what I was having a hard time with is in Rocket Launcher there was no way to actually control the uh, controller type and this is the way to uh, get around that. So this is the way. <laughs> All right so once you hit save game remap uh, you know you, you could also do the same thing with save core remap so if you want the core to always be controller type uh, controller which I've done uh, for these systems then I say save core uh, remap file and for the light gun games I say save game remap file so I'm gonna go on back out of this and I'll show you the file themselves and how those get created uh, so I'm going to go ahead and back out of here, and let's go ahead and quit this guy. All right, so yeah, like I was saying, nothing to do in Rocket Launcher, which is amazing. Um, so if you go to your RetroArch uh, root, and we go down to config, you're going to find a folder that's called Remaps. So then, based on the core that you're in, uh, what I did is I went through uh, the light gun games, and I essentially did a configuration for each one of these. So uh, the Dreamcast, the the Flycast core, that's what that is. Uh, that folder got auto generated, and then here are the light gun games for that system. You can see there's the Flycast, so that's for the core. I'm going to go ahead and edit this so you can see what's in it. So really, the, the only thing that I was caring about for the core was the controller type. So that's what that is. Um, I don't have player three through six, so that's why that's all looking like that. But that's essentially it. But if we were to look at, let's say, a, I don't know, let's, let's look at the House of the Dead. So a light gun game for the Dreamcast, you're gonna see that the controller type is different. So we got controller uh, device 1 and 2 is 4, and you saw previously it was uh, set to 1. So uh, player 1 and 3, or 3 and 4 here, if we were playing a light gun game, would absolutely have no function whatsoever because it, it's stuck in uh, controller type 1, which is the uh, controller itself. But for player 1 and 2, it requires a light gun. So uh, I wanted to also remap the buttons because on the light gun, uh, you know, there's uh, two additional buttons on the aim track. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to remap the buttons themselves. So uh, remember before we were looking at uh, button A and button B on the Dreamcast controller. Well, I wanted those buttons to represent something on the light gun. So I I said equals zero equals Z. So that's really how you can figure or work around what that button letter represents. Uh, it's a little trippy, but it, it works. It's amazing. So I, you can see I did that for player one, and then I did that for player two down below. 
and that is it. So you, what you can literally do is do this for one of the light gun games, like I did, and then copy and paste that file multiple times, and then rename the file to the game name that you have, and that's it. I mean, it, it is amazing. So let's go ahead and launch, uh, I don't know, House of the Dead 2, and then let's take a look at what that looks like. So there's House of the Dead. So what's awesome here is RetroArch supports um, CHD files, so these are compressed files, saves you a lot of space. Uh, also, just the overall, um, I, I, I guess, feel and uh, I, I guess just the way it performs, it's just a lot more stable uh, in terms of the game itself. Um, the CD games in general um, are a little uh, wonky when you're using a launcher that uh, requires basically a you know a virtual CD drive. Sometimes it doesn't launch correctly. Um, so, and you could have everything set up, but it's just how the software uh, worked. But the CHD file works around all of it, so it's absolutely amazing. So, uh, light gun time. So. Sure. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna enter in here, but I'll show you the controls here. So if I go uh, tab here, hit backspace, go to quick menu, options. There's the House of the Dead you see there. Um, oh, why am I going to options? Controls. Sorry. So there it is. Light gun. It's set up. Nothing I needed to do. So when I'm actually playing. There you go, we got two players in here. And once we get through here, you're gonna see that I'm gonna be taking this guy down. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, can't can't skip this apparently. Oh, B. There you go. There you go, so There she is, guys. Unbelievable. So, unbelievable. So, it, it absolutely works. And I wanted to share that with you guys. I know it's been a while. Um, there's been a lot of projects going around on uh, my Discord channel, and it has been taking a lot of time. <laughs> but it is absolutely amazing. I want to thank all of those guys that are uh, super active. I'm not going to name names, but they know who they are if they're watching. So, you guys are awesome, best people on the planet, and we will catch you guys next time. I hope that helps.